Well, hello, it's Dave here, and welcome back to the channel. Um, since last we saw you, a number of people have been asking about how do you go about sorting out getting your car sorted out the tour. So let's go through the story. It's a bit of a saga. Remember that for later. It all starts off when you decide you're going to tow a car, and we decided we were going to do that because we'd looked at taking a motorcycle with us. That doesn't work when you've got a dog. Then we got hold of a trike that we thought, you know, you can drive on a car license. We'll take that with us. Again, that doesn't work when you've got a dog. Um, in fact, when you've got a dog, you need to have something you can put the dog in if you're going to go any distance and have a look around places. So we decided, right, a car was the way to go. Fine. And you'd think it would be simple, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's not. Um, first thing you've got to do is find out whether your van is capable of towing. And the way you do that is by looking at, well, what I think is called the VIN plate. In our case, there are two of them um, just inside the driver's side door. Uh, one is the original VIN plate from Mercedes. Um, and the second is the, I think they call it a stage two plate, which was put on by auto sleepers when the, um, the conversion was done from it being a sprinter to being a motorhome. Now, as luck would have it, both of the plates have exactly the same thing on there. And what you're looking for is the gross train weight. And in our case, the gross train weight is 5,500 kilograms. The next thing you need to know is what has been known, I believe, as mass in running order, um, but it's, it's the gross vehicle weight rather than the gross train weight. So it's the maximum weight the van can be when it's on the road. And in our case, that's 4,100 kilograms. That leaves you 1,400 kilograms in our case, which is the maximum weight we can tow. Um, because that's the the van and, and the car together, or trailer, can be no more than 5,500 kilograms. Okay, so that's that sorted out. Um, how that works with licensing is anybody's guess at the minute, because they keep on changing how this all works. Apparently, if you've got um, a license, a car license, driving license uh, for a car, B, you'll be fine, apparently. But who knows? You need to check that for yourself, uh, looking at what your license is and what the government website says this week, because it might not be the same tomorrow. Anyway, having looked at that, we knew then that we would have a maximum of 1,400 kilograms that we could tow. So that meant looking around for a car we want now. As you've probably gathered, I'm not a small boy. Um, I'm six foot two and slightly north of 10 stone seven. Um, I'm a long way north of 10 stone seven. I'm a hell of a long way north of 10 stone seven. Big lad, tall from, from bump to the top of the head. So I sit quite tall in seats. So I need a car that's got some level of size. And if you've seen Madame Wonderfluff, Kira, the hound, You'll know she's not exactly small. Um, and Jill, we're all decent sized human beings. Let's put it that way. Um, so we thought, right, we want something quite tall. Um, I like new cars. Just accept that. I don't like second hand. Don't like other people's problems. So we would have a new car. So you go hunting about. And what you've got to find is the curb weight of the car. The curb weight being the weight of the car with a full tank of petrol, all its oils, batteries charged up, whatever, whatever else. They'll come up with the curb weight. And the curb weight of the car needed to be no more than, I thought, 1350 kilograms, which allowed 50 kilograms for the airframe and, and any gubbins and whatever else that was going to put in there, that would have to be the absolute maximum. And that would mean we could put nothing in the car while we were towing it. 
So off you go and you have a look around the various different cars that you think are going to suit your purposes. And we ended up looking at the Hyundai i20, having had uh, a Hyundai i10 as a courtesy car when we got the um, self-leveling system fitted over in Ulverston. And Jill and I found that to be quite an effective little beastie. It was quite nippy. It was quite good. We liked it. So I thought, right, it was a little bit on the small side, a little bit cramped. I felt as though I was driving a bit like that. So we looked at the i20 and the i20 has shed loads of room um, and I could get one, <laughs> which is quite important at the minute because there's a lot of cars you just kind of get and I don't know why. And it did seem to me at the time that we needed to be fairly quick because apparently and I don't know this for absolute certain, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure, you can't tow an all-electric vehicle. You know, one of these things that you plug in and charge up and, and what have you. You can't tow one of them because they regenerate electricity on the hubs. That goes back into the battery and you can overcharge the battery. Bangity woof, fiery flames, car gone. Can't do that. Can't do a full hybrid either for the same reason because it regenerates electricity and so on and so forth. Um, neither can you tow an automatic. Right, and before people start getting picky, I know that there are certain cars that are flagged as automatic that you can tow, but they're actually manual cars that have electronic gear shift. I found it easier just to, right, I'm not gonna go into that, just not automatic, manual. Manual, manual handbrake, um, no clever toys as far as possible, but that's get aroundable. And then within that weight. So we decided the Hyundai i20 Premium was going to be the one. And we set up the purchase, went through to have a look at it, did the deal, blah, blah, blah. Excellent. At the same time, I decided that the best course of action was to ring our insurers and uh, I'm not going to name them just remember the start of the video our insurers said at the time what is it you're trying to do I said well I'm going to have the car modified so it can be towed on an airframe this is to allow the brakes and everything to work okay they said what do you need us to do I said well it's not being done yet and I haven't purchased the car yet I need a quote on the car and I need you to understand that this modification is going to happen. Right, that's not a bother. I've put a note on your policy um, that that's going to happen. Just contact us when you've bought the car and we'll finalise everything off. Cool. So a couple or three weeks later, car arrives, deal gets done. I go to pick it up. I give them a ring to say, right, we're picking it up. Yes, it's not a problem. You'll be insured all day. I said, now I need to remind you that it is going to be modified to allow us to tow it on an airframe. And that is going to happen on the, whatever date it was. Let's say it was the 6th of October. So it's going to happen on the 6th of October and it will be towed on the 6th of October. Yes, that's not a problem. I've put a note on your policy. Give us a ring on the 6th of October and we'll finalize it. Uh, all right, okay, that's fine. So off the car went down to work uh, to Grimsby to tow bars and tow cars or tow bars to coat to coat. It's not easy to say tow bars to tow cars, depending on which one it is on which day of the week. And the job got done, as you can see. Tow bars to tow cars is here on the right, massive big signs.
Right, okay. So when you're setting these up, you'll see the eye bolts that go in the front. One's painted black and one's painted silver. The black one goes in the driver's side. With those, you just line them up in the hole and then you wind them all the way home, right to the bottom of the thread. A little bit of grease on those threads goes a long way as well every now and again. To put your A-frame on, what I find easiest with these, if you open that right up and hold it through the hole, it'll balance for you. Finger on the back of the ball and just pop that through. The square back of the pin goes towards the A-frame. And when you've got it through, there's a little safety pin there, just goes back through the bottom of the pin. Pop the pin in, click it over, and latch the frame on. There's a little bungee in the kit. You can hook that up over the wiper right to the bottom. Stand the frame up over end, and you can use that for manoeuvring it round on site to the back of your van for loading. Bring it up to the back of the motor home, lever back, handle up, I tend to just drop my knee on there. Just make sure that's latched. Your emergency breakaway, the small carabiner goes to the car, the large one to the motorhome. So that clicks anywhere onto the silver ring in the bottom grille of the vehicle, down through the hole, through that carabiner, and then onto the breakaway point on the tow bar. The black lead here, this is your on and off switch for everything. So I tend to put this on last. When you get to site, take it off first. These are fairly obvious which way around they go. So it's a standard 13 pin plug, so square peg to the bottom. Push it in and turn it 90. Down through the hole. And it's the same on the back of the motor home. And then finally, just take the little bungee. Pull your knees neat and tidy together. Go a few times around with that. And that just keeps everything neat and tidy. And that's your front end set. Okay, so on the back of the vehicle, you've got your rear toe sign. On this vehicle, that just hooks up on the little bungees around the rear struts. Number plates to match the motorhome supplied. So to change them over, grab that strip in the middle and pull it towards you. Pull the plate down and out, swap it for the other one. With those, you've just got to make sure they've gone right to the top, pop your two ends in, and clip that back on. And that's your back end of your vehicle set. Okay, so at this point, you'll all be hooked onto your van just about ready to go. You just need to set the inside of the vehicle up. So to do that, get your ignition key, put it in the ignition, and turn it up to the first click. That'll release the steering lock on the vehicle. And then with this vehicle, you turn the key all the way back off. That shuts all the engine management down in the car. Always just check the wheels released. Ensure you're in neutral and your handbrake is off. And that is it. You are ready to go. So, right. We've been, we've picked the car up. I've towed it back because I've already told the insurers it's getting done on the 6th of October. They've said, that's fine. Just give us a ring to confirm. Fine. So we get back to the site. We get hold of the, uh, the phone and we give them a ring and said, right, this is just to confirm that the job's been done. Is there anything else I need to do? And what we get is, what job? I said, we've had the conversion done so that we can tow it. Have you? Yes, there should be a note on the account, on the whatever it is on your screen. The girl I spoke to when last I spoke to your company Put a note on the screen to say that well, we're getting this done today well it's done today it's finished um oh there's no note to that effect ah oh. so now what she says oh well we'll we'll just it's not a problem we'll just add it to the policy and the, the fact that you've had the the, the vehicle done okay so she's clittering and clattering and the next thing you know is i've got to put it to the underwriters have you Yes. Right, I'm just doing that now. Can you hold for a while? The one thing I will say is the whole music was cracking. Um, proper 70s and 80s stuff, stuff I like. Anyway, she comes in halfway through the third time round 
uh, I'm not in love, 10 cc, brilliant, uh, to say the underwriters can't do it at the minute because there's nobody can just sign off on the amount of money it costs you to have the job done. But they'll find one that can and then they'll give you a ring a little bit later in the day and tell you that it's done. Now I should say that this was about half past one, two o'clock, half past two in the afternoon. Right, so we waited and nothing happened. Lovely. <sighs> what do we do? Because as far as I can see, I might not be insured. So we rang them back the next morning, fairly early doors, about quarter past nine, half past nine, and couldn't get to talk to the girl that we'd spoken to the day before, but spoke to somebody else who I think might have been her supervisor. At which point she says, ah oh, yes, I see there's a note on here from the 26th of September saying that you were going to be getting it modified to tow the car. I said, yes. How come the girl yesterday couldn't find it? She says, I've no idea. I did, it's there. You can't miss it. I says, so what do we do now? She says, well, just a second. Uh, I can see it's been passed to the underwriters and no, that insurance company, because the company that we're dealing with is a brokerage, it turns out, that insurance company won't insure cars for being towed. So now what happens? She says, well, you're gonna have to take another policy out. Now, bear in mind, at this point in time, we were gonna leave the site we were on and go across to Sherwood Pines. Okay, so what are we gonna do? She says, well, I'm gonna to have to cancel that policy for which you will be refunded £2.78 pence. This is a lovely thank you. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll have to open another policy up for you with one of the companies that we deal with that will cover the car for being towed. Right, okay then, fine. So they did that. Um, we ended up paying about £330, there or thereabouts, uh, to insure the car. But you're over a barrel, aren't you? You've got to have the insurance or you can't, you can't do anything. Well, we could have done, I suppose. Jill could have driven the car behind the van across to, which would have given us a little bit more time. That's fair enough and that's true enough. But even so, that's not what it's all about, is it? Um, so, we ended up buying the new policy. So, there are a few things that you can learn from all of this. One, you must know what weight you can tow, you must know what car you can tow. And we found that the, the company we went to, Tow Bars to Tow Cars, gave us all the advice we needed and guided us through. For instance, there were two models in the range of the i20 that they wouldn't or couldn't convert. Um, one of which was the N-Class, the other one uh, was the top of the range, super duper, everything on it. Um, version of the one we've got. So that's fine. It, it's worthwhile deciding which system airframe you want to get and then deal with them. Ask them all the questions. They're the ones that are going to be doing it. They know what they can and can't do. So that, that's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is do your research. Um, we're very, very pleased with the car that we've got. It's got all kinds of bells and whistles on um, and it does the job for us really nicely. But don't just buy the first one you see. Um, after that, it's, it's, it's up to you. Research your airframe supplier, research your car with your airframe system supplier and then you're good to go. But before you do anything, check with your insurance. Ask them the questions. Find out from them exactly what it is they need you to do in order for you to be insured the second the job's done and you go to tow the car away. Had we not been fortunate enough uh, to have been able to get that new policy sorted out on that day, and that's because we've been with that company a hell of a long time, it would appear that there are many brokers out there that don't understand what this is all about. You must ask the question, will it be covered fully comprehensive 
when it is being toured because one of the policies we got quoted on separately from all of this was oh no 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 it's only third party when it's on the back that's no good you need your fully comprehensive you need it fully insured while it's there you need to know that your insurance covers you for every eventuality you need and you need to know that before you start as we have discovered and if you can get it in place and have it understood and everything agreed before the day of the conversion so much the better question now is are we pleased we had it done and i think the answer to that is hell yes um i've got no qualms about towing the car now and all right we've only i think we've probably only towed it less than 200 miles um but you don't know it's there most of the time um it, it, it follows the van wherever you go. I've not found any difficulties with don't, doing it, so don't be scared of it. Um, and for us, at any rate, it's definitely worthwhile doing. My mobility is such um, that it, it's going to let us get to places that we otherwise wouldn't be able to get to if we didn't have some form of transport with us. And that, I think, has to be a good thing. So there you go. It, it, it's not... I was going to say it's not a difficult process. It's, it can be complex if you don't have everything in place, I think. But I think it's worthwhile doing. The, the, the hardest part you're going to find, I think, will be getting booked into somewhere to get it done. Certainly at this time of the year, because everywhere seems to be full. We tried all sorts of different places to, to see what was available, what could get done. Um, and we were fortunate, I think, to get booked in when we did with what was effectively three weeks notice. Anyway, there you go. I hope you found this helpful. Um, and I know I wish I knew all of this before we started doing what we've done. Um, so if you have found it helpful, that'll be grand. Share it with your friends. Tell everybody you know that's thinking about this to come and have a look at the video and hopefully it'll help them out as well if there's anything i've missed tell us down there and uh, i'll clatter answers in and, and help you out wherever i can i don't claim to be an expert i'm anything but because an expert is just a drip under pressure and i've had too long a time of being exactly that so there you go as i say hope you've enjoyed it hope you found it helpful and if so we'll see you on the next one but until then enjoy the roads enjoy the skies but most of all, enjoy your lives because your life rocks when your living room rules. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.